Hey everybody, Tommy here, and um, today I'd like to show you, uh, I'd like to showcase uh, my uh, ray marching project that I current that I just pushed to GitHub and uh, made public. Um, for those of you who don't know what ray marching is, it's um, a method for visualizing uh, volumetric data. So here on the right, you can see a block of volumetric data that's uh, like that's the kind of data you get from a CT scan or a MRI stuff like that. Um, you might be used to seeing it uh, like uh, like this. These are the slices that make up the the volume, and uh, yeah, it's combined into a one volumetric texture. This one is uh, 512, 512, 161. But they can be bigger than that. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, for so yeah, array marching. What it does is uh, after you have this kind of data uh, for each pixel on screen. Uh, yeah, this this is the same data as the block on the right, except visualized with ray marching. So for every pixel on screen, you march through the volume and accumulate. Uh, uh, colors and opacities that you get from this one dimensional data here on the right. Uh, I'll talk about that a bit more in detail uh, in a while. So I'd like to start with saying what features we have or what features I put into uh, this plugin that uh, that you can use. Um, first of all, it works with uh, binary Unreal uh, 425. You don't need a, you don't you do not need a source build. Uh, it uses actual volume textures, so it does not use uh, flip, flip books uh, to make uh, fake volumes out of uh, 2D textures. Uh, we use uh, pre-computed uh, pre uh, illumination, so as long as the volume doesn't move and these lights don't move, uh, the lighting does not get recalculated. So yeah, you can see that now it's running at uh, beautiful 120 FPS. Nothing gets recalculated. If I start moving this, uh, it drops a little bit, but uh, nothing too horrible. Um, excuse me. Um, all right. So yeah, pre-computed uh, pre illumination. Uh, we support loading .mhd and .raw files through blueprints or through drag and drop into the editor, uh, which will make this uh, nice. Uh, yeah, asset out of it. Uh, we use uh, ray marching that's based on Ryan Brux's uh, now pretty ancient ray marching tutorial, uh, but still pretty much the same system. Uh, we use materials that have uh, HLSL directly injected into the material. I'll talk about that in a later video. Um, what I'm extremely proud of is that this thing has full editor compatibility, which I'll be showing off shortly, and you can edit transfer functions live in editor. All right, um, so yeah, I'll get started with the transfer functions. Uh, again, for if somebody's new to all this, this whole medical imaging, uh, medical visualization thing, or volumetrics in general, uh, the transfer function, uh, all right, the, these blueprints are uh, ready to use out of the box. All the things I am going to be editing are in a Ray March volume category for wait, what the, uh, Ray March. All right, yeah, here we go. So all the properties I'm going to be editing are in this uh, Ray March volume category and under this blueprint. Um, transfer function. Uh, here is an asset that already contains uh, the loaded data from the MHD file, and uh, yeah, this has some meta metadata, and uh, this is the actual volume texture representing the data, and this is a transfer function, which if uh, you use this transfer function and the current window that I have set, uh, this is the image you'll get. Transfer function is, uh, yeah, I have the image on the right, the, I have the block here on the right just to show off uh, how this gets transformed between one and the other. Uh, so this, um, 
is a transfer function that's being used right now. And uh, you can see that like everything under 0.5 gets fully uh, gets transformed into fully transparent. Then there's this uh, yellow, darkish yellow going into a white and then like a purple, like a pinkish coral, whatever. And um, so whatever is black here on the right is a zero. Whatever is white is a one. And that then gets mapped onto the transfer function, uh, yeah, like as in here. So like you can see that like uh, uh, this whole empty space here is just too low to like even get above 0.5. So it's like, yeah, it's it, it just fully transparent. Now uh, I'll head straight in and start showing off uh, my live transfer function editing. If I move this transparency up, you can see that suddenly more and more stuff is visible because uh, lower values get mapped to actual uh, like yeah, actual non-transparent colors. So you can see that like if you edit this uh, transfer function, you can you can completely change what you see with the same data being used. And uh, yeah, this is one of the main things I would like to show off because uh, I've had, uh, it's always been a giant hassle to edit these and uh, being able to use the Unreal Curve editor for this is amazing. So yeah, so that's what the transfer function is. It uh, transforms a value of a zero to one to a value uh, to a color and opacity. So that's what you can do if you edit the transfer function that's currently being used to render. Um, there, is a, there is a whole bunch of these there in curves, uh, yeah, the, in the TB Raymarcher plugin content slash curves. There is a whole bunch of them. I just stole these from Slicer because um, they have a XML describing all their uh, transfer functions. So I just parsed that and made color curves out of it. Uh, you can edit them, you can create new ones and yeah, go crazy. Um, uh, I'd like to say uh, a little bit about windowing because uh, the windowing and transfer function is like transfer function is the two things that actually uh, decide on what's the final image that you see. Uh, right now I'm using some the default oh, fuck. some default windowing parameters that I said before, but um, here are uh, the windowing parameters of the asset that's currently being used to show both of these volumes. So both of these volumes are showing the same asset, uh, except this one has lit ray march disabled. That's a uh, yeah, that's just a toggle that lets you see the, the underlying data, not volume rendered. So yeah, you can see that this is the same data, just uh, not displayed in a, such a nice way. And uh, these textures are both normalized to 0 to 1. I'll also talk about that later a bit. And uh, so right now, the, there is a, the windowing consists of these four parameters. It's a center with uh, low and high cutoffs. Uh, and I'll just quickly show you what uh, what the results are if you move these. So like if I move the center more to the right, that means that uh, values will get mapped to the zero and one, like uh, they will get mapped lower in general. So like if I move this by a point one to the right, a value in here will get mapped lower. Uh, by 0 0.1, which means it's uh, like the transfer function is going to be more aggressive. So like you can see that like if I move the, if I transfer it far enough, everything is going to get transparent because uh, yeah, because it just maps, it just maps to below 0 0.5 and now, and that's fully transparent. So you can, uh, you can play with these depending on what you want to see in the image. Uh, like yeah, as you can see, this shows mostly bones and yeah as you can see here this is now mostly black so it's like uh, 
that's why everything is transparent because everything just gets mapped low on the transfer function. Um, if you want to see inside of the volume, this is a clipping plane, this uh, white rectangle thing, and that can be used to, wait, I'm just going to turn off clip, uh, snap in here, and that can be used to look inside, uh, just like cut away the volumes, you can go crazy with this also, and uh, it, it works in any, any direction, and you can use it to like look inside of the volumes, and yeah, even when you're remarching it. Um, the high and low cutoffs, uh, oh yeah, no, sorry. Uh, the width this, uh, describes, uh, there, is a, there is a formula for how uh, using the center and width stuff gets uh, mapped onto the transfer function. And, but uh, in general, like with the settings that I have right now, it's a uh, center minus half of the width is zero, center plus half of the width is one. So right now it's pretty much uh, zero will get mapped to zero because, uh, or actually uh, now a zero in the data will actually get mapped to a zero and uh, a 0 0.56 will get mapped to 1 because that's uh, 0 0.28 plus uh, 0 0.28, which is half of the width. Uh, the low and high cutoffs uh, with this transfer function may be not as clear. Give me a sec. I'll modify this a bit. And um, if, I move the, if I move the window very low so that, like, yeah, you can see that, like, everything gets uh, visualized now. But if I en enable the high cutoff, you can see stuff starts disappearing. And that's because, uh, oh yeah, if I, uh, now it's enabled, sorry. If I enable, for example, these values right here, they're now way above the transfer function. They get mapped to like a two, which uh, normally it just, uh, it just snaps to the end, uh, but if you enable the high cutoff, those get uh, excluded completely, and they don't, they are not displayed at all. So yeah, that's what the high cutoffs are for. Low cutoff is the same, but for the lower values, uh, most often the transfer functions have a zero 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 uh, color at the left, anyways. So it doesn't make a difference if you snap to this fully transparent color or not. But if you did have like a fully transparent black here, for example, to make it clear. If I turn on the low cutoff, uh, okay, nothing happens because oh yeah, because I'm here. But yeah, if I don't turn off the low, don't turn off the low cutoff, everything is like all the low values are below zero on the transfer function, and so they get uh, snapped to the full full black on the left that I put there on the on the very left. Uh, if I enable the low cutoff, the only the values that are actually above zero or at zero of the window will get displayed. Everything that's below the transfer function will get cut off. All right. Um, if I will. Uh, there will be a better explanation of the windowing and a link to the formula uh, in the GitHub uh, README. So feel free to read that for more info. Actually, uh, uh, I went crazy with the description there, so it has a lot of info. Um, all right. As I said before, uh, these uh, textures are normalized. So. What you see here are values from 0 to 1. Uh, Unreal also supports textures that are not normalized, um, like one-dimensional textures, uh, uh, as, as in uh, one-dimensional, as in uh, one-channel textures. Uh, they are actually still three-dimensional since they're volumes. Um, the downside is that by default, they cannot be saved persistently. So the the one I have uh, like a default resource that's already in the plugin, that one is uh, normalized, so it can be saved. Uh, but you can import, um, but you can import uh, textures. Uh, you can import MHDs as uh, 
non-normalized. So SF, it's uh, called red float, or it's R32 float. That's the, te uh, that, that's the texture type. That's an unnormalized float. And that will let you load volumes, uh, let, that will let you load MHD volumes with their, um, with their original values. Um, that can be done by drag and dropping actually. Uh, so if I go into my uh, beautiful folder here and find my downloads folder where I have a subset of uh, some publicly available MHD data, there's also a link to these uh, publicly available data in the, um, in the repo description. I can pick like one of these extremely big ones, like this one is 350 meg uh, 340 megabytes. Uh, that's the raw data and the MHD is like actually just a header. So this is just like a couple couple info and then it says, oh yeah, and here's all the data. Um, I'm not sure if that's gonna crash or not, but hopefully not. All right, drag and drop MHD into, into the, uh, into the folder browser and it starts asking me questions. Uh, first question is gonna ask me is if I want to convert it to G8 or G16. If you want your uh, asset to be persistent, then you will click yes here and that's gonna normalize it and save it as a G8 or G16 depending on the original format. If it's a, if it's a one byte format in the MHD, it's gonna save it as G8. If it's a two and more, it's gonna save it as a G16 because those are the two uh, formats that support persistency. So, but I don't want this normalized because I wanna show off that uh, you can also use non-normalized. And so it's going to ask me, so do you want R32 float? And I do want that. It will also warn you that it's not it's, it's not going to be saveable. Uh, now this got imported and you can see that the, uh, you can actually see it in the thumbnail that this has values that are a lot greater than one. Like um, whenever uh, something has a brightness or like a color of uh, more than one, Unreal does this nice uh, like a burn, uh, burny, uh, visualization of it like it's like shining in your face so yeah this is and uh, what I do is I name it data transient and it's, it's always transient so like it's so that you know that uh, you cannot actually save it um, actually looking at this this should also have the word transient in it I will fix that momentarily but yeah you can see that this is uh, truly a giant texture now um, it used to be, uh, as you saw before, and when I was picking the file, it was 350 megabytes uh, in my downloads folder. Uh, but now it's actually almost 700 megabytes. And that's because uh, the original file was uh, short. And to import it uh, in the R32 float, I actually had to convert it to uh, full floats. So now it's four bytes per voxel with like, yeah, 300 million voxels. And so, yeah, it's a giant bloody texture. But the nice thing is um, the the Raymarker can actually handle it and uh, the pre-computation is actually yeah, not horrible. Uh, if I select this asset now, um, you can see that, uh, yeah, this doesn't show much because uh, the window is probably not set correctly, but... out of my way and so yeah uh, if I change any anything here oh yeah um, this is obviously not a good the center and width for non normalized data because uh, like yeah you want a width of like a thousand probably Yep, that looks more reasonable, and it doesn't have a transfer function assigned, so it just uses uh, something that's pretty similar to this blocky, uh, uh, like this default transfer function of just going from full black to full white and full transparency. So yeah, if I give it some, uh, which one do I like? I like lung. Um, yeah, so now if I give it 
this, you can see that even if I go to like 500 and a window of 1000, I actually see, yeah, so these are, since now it's not normalized, these are like standard Hounsfield units. So this is, uh, ah, well, yeah, you can Google that. But uh, just, yeah, in short, Hounsfield units, uh, it's a unit used in x-rays. It's like a minus 1,000 is air, zero is water, uh, like around a couple hundred is uh, bones, like 700, 600 is bones, and like metals get into the thousands. Um, and yeah, now if I slide the slider, I can like, you know, I can show you that once I get to about yeah, a minus something, then even air starts uh, getting into like the the positive end of my transfer function, which uh, actually is kind of cool for visualizing the lungs. Uh, you can do like a invert uh, invert visualization, like instead of uh, instead of showing the matter, you can show where there is nothing, and. Yeah, th this transfer function is really cool for visualizing the vasculature of the lungs. I really, really like this one. And like, it's it's amazing how full our lungs are of uh, vessels and stuff. It's it's amazing. All right. Um, all right. I'll just quickly play a bit with the lights and the clipping plane to show uh, like the performance in editor. It's uh, like, yeah, you can, the, these are four lights that are now all affecting this volume. Um, like I said, we're using a pre-computed uh, illumination volume. So when I actually go into the material and into my texture parameters, there is a compute volume texture three, and that is my illumination volume it's bloody giant uh, right now actually I'm using half resolution because uh, yeah with these giant textures using full resolution uh, light volume is actually pretty expensive so half resolution volumes seem to work very fine and uh, yeah as you can see even with four lights uh, affecting this it's like the frame rate is I mean not not great you can see it drops to like 20 FPS, but it's a giant volume and, and, and it's four lights affecting it, so it's still real time capable. And um, if I actually make it in, oh, um, and you can actually see that when I move this, like since now there is more stuff to cast more shadow, this illumination volume gets more dark. Uh, when more as more stuff gets cut away, this now now you can see that like there's no shadow in the volume. And this gets all done in compute shaders. Um, I'll make another whole video about those. And yeah, actually, I, w I wanted to just uh, a quick showcase that, like, yeah, these are the lights affecting the volume. If I move them around, you can see how how they like. Uh, how this is like a little bit like a cloud and it goes through. I mean, yeah, 426 is going to release a big volumetrics update, so it's fitting that uh, my plugin is also going to get released around the same time uh, to get on the volumetrics uh, craze. And <laughs> yeah, all right, uh, I just want to show off all the settings that uh, the uh, Raymarch volume has, and uh, that's going to be it for this video. This is already way too long way longer than I expected. Um, there is an option to turn off the lit ray march that yeah makes it look exactly like this. So like you can see how you, what your window is doing. And uh, oh shoot, I, but I want to visualize it again. I, I moved the window and now it's, oh, it doesn't matter. Um, if you turn off the light uh, volume, this is a toggle for light volume half resolution. If you turn that off, uh, for this kind of volume, it's gonna hurt. If I start moving this, it's not gonna be nice. I mean, almost real time, but not quite. 
uh, yeah, like 10 FPS. So yeah, if you're planning on using like giant volumes like this, do not uh, turn this off probably unless you have a really beefy GPU. And I'm turning this back on because I like my frames per second. And um, this is the center. Uh, if you set it here, it's not going to affect the, it doesn't affect the one on the right. Uh, because this is settings that are uh, specific to this one blueprint, but when you uh, but when I modify the defaults, that affects all blueprints that are using this same uh, asset. Oh yeah, this has some other m metadata about the uh, stuff that uh, got read from the that got read from the MHD file. It has the spacing and the resulting world dimensions. So these these guys actually get scaled properly when you load them. And um, has some other met metadata like uh, like minimum maximum values that uh, got parsed. Actually, if, if you import as uh, R32 float, these two don't get filled. Uh, they only get filled when you down when you import as a normalized volume. So you can see that this guy is normalized, but you do have the info what is zero and what is one. So a zero in the texture is actually minus uh, 1024 in the original volume, and uh, one in the texture is uh, 3K. And yeah, this toggle will tell you that this is actually a normalized volume. So the texture, you have to work with it as, uh, as a normalized texture and you need to recalculate it back into the Hounsfield units uh, if you want to do anything, any user-facing UIs. All right. All the settings. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, one of the last settings here is uh, ray marching steps that uh, affects the quality of, of the image you see here. So if I go very, very, very close to this and uh, put it to like 50 ray marching steps, you can see that it's going to get very noisy and uh, stuff starts disappearing. It doesn't look as clean anymore. Uh, and if I, on the other hand, if I set it to something like very high, like a 300, it, it starts looking really nice. Uh, I mean, there's a diminishing return, so like anything about 200, 150 is usually fine. Uh, if you set it to something ridiculously high, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of detail, uh, but for every pixel that you have to render, uh, the pixel shader has to do, uh, yeah, that many more times more operations. Yeah, it looks nice, though. But yeah, uh, 200 is reasonable. And um, okay, one last option that's uh, I didn't find an actual use for it yet, but it's pretty cool, so I'm just gonna show it off. Uh, you can select the light volume to also be 32 bit, that's the same difference in format like uh, with loading the volumes. Um, so, what that does is right now the light volume cannot go over one, so it's never gonna make uh, it's never gonna make a voxel brighter brighter than what it was. It can only make it darker. But if you go to uh, if you actually make the light volume 32 bit, um, well, for one thing, it's gonna be giant now because uh, yeah, the light volume is. Is gonna now have four bytes per voxel instead of one byte per voxel, and but what that does is that oh yeah these uh, these lights each have a direction uh, specified by the arrow that's uh, that's the direction of the light and an intensity. If you keep increasing that, uh, it's gonna shine brighter. Of course, you can even have lights with negative intensity that just cast a shadow, and. Uh, yeah, what uh, what enabling the 32-bit uh, light volume may does is that like with a ridiculously strong light, you can make the the light volume like super oversaturated. Like you know, you put a put a flash lamp right next to it and shine on it. It looks kind of cool, but uh, probably not very useful. 
All right, and um, I think I will go back to disabling it. And now, even though this light has a 50 intensity, it doesn't do jack because, uh, yeah, because the maximum that can be saved in the light texture is one anyway. So, I mean, it does do something since it shines through, but uh, it's not going to go over one. And, uh, yeah, wow, that looks very, very dark now. All, right. um, all of these things are usable out of the box, so if you drag and drop an asset and uh, there's a blueprints, uh, there's a blueprints folder that has all three of these actors in it. Uh, all you need to do is after you uh, after you drop in a, a volume, uh, the, the Raymarch volume, you need to go under the Raymarch volume settings and assign it a clipping plane here and the lights you want to affect it. That's uh, all the setup that you need to do. And then give it a volume and uh, give it an MHD asset and a transfer function and it's just going to work out of the box. There, I also made some widgets and a very, very basic uh, level that you can actually play in runtime. So yeah, this actually packages and um, uh, you can use it in runtime. It's not just for playing in the editor. So if I hit play now, um, yeah, this is a, actually like a play playing the level. I made a, made a very basic uh, very basic widgets here to play with the volume so you can actually move the width uh, the window center and the window width oh uh, this should say width that's not a center the the second slider is window width and uh, yeah you can see that if i make the window width very wide everything gets kind of like uh, samey because the differences in the values are not as pronounced on the other hand if you make the window width very small uh, you can see very very clearly like uh, nice differences between the the tissues for example like yeah, if i wanted to look at all the soft tissues i'll just set this to something like 200 and uh, this to something about i don't know it doesn't matter um, this there is a transfer function picker. You can pick uh, whichever one you feel like. Uh, all stolen from Slicer. Um, fat doesn't seem to do too much. Okay, I like fat. Um, interesting. Uh, maybe the transfer function is a bit fucked. Um, pulmonary arteries is actually also a good one. Um, I like that one. It, it has like nice uh, natural colors. Uh, these sliders you can fine tune. Uh, if you click the fine tune, then it's going to go into fine tune mode. You can see that now it's from a minus thousand to three thousand. If you fine tune, it goes from 109 to 309, so plus minus 100. So, like, if you want to make some small adjustments, and since, yeah, this is a pretty, uh, the slider is 3,000, it's 4,000 wide, and uh, and not very actually wide on the screen so fine tuning is for like those nice final adjustments if you just want to see something really nicely and also can fine tune the window um, set the low and high cutoffs it's probably not going to make a difference here and you can also save the values to the asset uh, that wouldn't make too much sense with this asset as uh, it's uh, not normalized so it cannot be saved anyways but uh, if, um, oh yeah, there's a, a picker for already loaded assets. So if you don't have to load stuff again from the disk, if you already loaded it. So if I just pick the MHD file, oh yeah, I, <laughs> I left it with this uh, screwed up uh, transfer function. But if I give it some nicer transfer function and save current values to asset, it's actually gonna get saved into my MHD asset. Uh, not that one, this one. See, now I selected cardiac one and this um, these two values. Here you can see them normalized. So they actually got saved to the asset and that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be persistent. Um, you can, uh, there's also two buttons to load a normalized uh, volume in runtime and load F32 volume in runtime. So if I do load normalized, I can just pick whatever here, pick some random asset. Uh, 
it gets loaded with the screwed up transfer function for some reason. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Oh yeah, um, okay, that, that's actually a bug, I need to fix that. Um, but yeah, this allows you to load stuff uh, normalized in runtime. Uh, they everything you load in runtime will be saved uh, or loaded as transient, transient, so you cannot save it. Uh, if you would like that to be persistent, then look into the source of uh, the loading menu, and there's actually just one bool that you can flip, and it will be possible. It, it, it is definitely possible to create assets that are persistent during runtime. And you can also load stuff as F32 with the same difference as I talked before. And yeah, that's it. Um, this is just, uh, just a showcase. And there will be a couple more videos uh, going into specifics. Uh, next video is going to be about uh, blueprints and how to hook this up so it, uh, so it just works with blueprints. Even though, like... I expose only the very, very high level stuff into blueprints and uh, most 99% of the heavy lifting is done in C++. So uh, if you're only using blueprints, you can use it as it is, uh, but you're going to have a very hard time if you want to modify any, uh, like in any way, the way this works. Uh, if you know, know and use C++ and HLSL, you can actually go through the shaders and uh, and uh, modify the low level stuff. Uh, I would be very happy if uh, somebody can show me a nicer ray marcher or a faster compute shader to calculate the illumination volume. But yeah, uh, I'm getting off track. Uh, all right, next video is going to be general usage and blueprints. Uh, then one more video about MHD loading in detail. Uh, actually, everything after the MHD, uh, everything after the Blueprint video is going to be heavy, heavy in C++ and HLSL. So for, from the third video on is uh, yeah the MHD loading. I'm going to describe that, how the textures get created, uh, then the ray marching materials. Uh, I will go into how we do this beautiful, beautiful hack um, to inject HLSL into um, to inject HLSL into uh, the material editor. You can see this beautiful closing brace here uh, that should definitely not belong there, and this opening brace at the end of a custom node also shouldn't belong there, but it's there and it works. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the fourth video on ray marching materials. I'm also going to go into all the HLSL of how we ray march. Uh, fifth video is going to be on the illumination materials. That's uh, one of the most interesting parts because that's where the that's where the compute shade that's where the compute shaders are. And uh, last one will go into the C++ uh, yeah into the C++ details of how the how this blueprint actually works what gets done there every tick and uh, how does it uh, how why does it react to stuff the way it reacts like uh, how how does it know that you touched this transfer function and how does it know that yeah, actually uh, that's the other transfer function than the one this is using yeah, how does it know that you touched this transfer function right now and like uh, stuff like that and yeah uh, that's gonna be the sixth and final video if you're interested in this uh, check out the github link in the description there is a giant readme there but i yeah i think i described pretty much all the functionality that i offer out of the box uh, but uh, everything I've been showing so far is exactly what you'll see after you turn on the project. If you clone it, clone it and run it, this is exactly what you'll see. And there is pretty much nothing hidden here that's, uh, that wouldn't be obvious on the first look. Just make sure to open the level blueprint. So yeah, there's some... This is a, I'm just spawning the menus uh, here and uh, setting the volumes in it. That's... Uh, 
pretty much it. Like there's uh, aside from this very simple level blueprint and the actors you see here, there's nothing else there. And um, yeah, everything should work out of the box and should work well. Uh, right now it only supports DirectX 11. Uh, there is some synchronization problems on DirectX 12 that sometimes some of the volumes get corrupt, corrupted and I have no idea why, so I'm just going to stick with DX11 since that's the mature main uh, RH, RHI anyways. Uh, Vulkan crashes uh, on startup um, if anybody has any experience with Vulkan and is uh, willing to um, willing to investigate that. I'm very. I would very much welcome any pointers as to that. All right, that's it, and uh, I'll be uploading the other videos uh, later this week, hopefully, uh, at least one or two of them. And uh, I will keep working on this. I still need to add a VR map, and after I add the VR map, there will be another video on the yeah, on the logic behind the VR uh, controls of this. But uh, that should actually be the shortest video since that's just yeah makes stuff grabbable and I mean everything else already works. So yeah, see you guys and uh, let me know what you think on the on the Unreal forums or in the comments here. I don't give a shit if you like and subscribe. I don't care about the algorithm. So see ya.